morning, everyone. Thank you for your patience. We had an all-star cast of folks that we wanted to be here this morning for the announcement. We have everyone here. Uh, let me make a couple of introductions. Uh, first off, I'm San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria. Thank you for being here today. I'm joined by the chair of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. Nathan Fletcher is here. Mm -hmm. Chairman Fletcher, thank you. Dr. Piedad Garcia, the deputy director of, of the County Department of Behavioral Health Services. Bob McElroy, CEO of the Alpha Project. San Diego City Council member Stephen Whitburn, whose district includes downtown and is very active at the city council level on homelessness issues. Uh, Rick Gentry, the president and CEO of the San Diego Housing Commission, uh, who has been instrumental uh, in this effort. Uh, Hafsa Keika uh, and her team uh, of the city's new uh, Homelessness Strategies and Solutions Department. Uh, Dr. Luke Bregman, uh, Bergman, sorry, uh, Luke is here. Dr. Luke is here, um, director of the County Behavioral Health Services Department. Ben and Carolina from Family Health Centers uh, are here, uh, one of the partners in this effort. Uh, Betsy Brennan, downtown, uh, downtown San Diego Partnerships President and CEO. She and her team uh, are literally on the front lines of addressing homelessness in the downtown area. I'm grateful that Betsy is here today. Uh, Chris Kuntz, who's representing the Regional Task Force on Homelessness. Thank you, Chris, for being here. Uh, and we also have a number of folks from uh, Wheels of Change from Alpha Project. The Wheels of Change folks are here. Uh, and a whole lot of city workers are here too. Our city employees, general services staff. Guys, thank you for being here. Round of applause, yeah, go right on, give it up. There, these guys are. You create a homeless shelter in like six weeks. I mean, or so, come, all right. So we are here today to announce the opening of a new shelter for people experiencing homelessness who are also dealing with severe substance abuse, mental illness, or sometimes both. This new shelter will be filled with the help of special outreach teams known as Community Harm Reduction Teams, also known as CHART, uh, who will help identify homeless individuals who will benefit from this shelter's more intensive services, including substance abuse counseling and licensed mental health clinicians. This facility is a result of the collaboration and cooperative relationship between the City of San Diego and the County of San Diego. It's the latest step in our collective commitment to end chronic homelessness one person at a time. Now, during the past year, we have worked to change the status quo on homelessness here in San Diego. Last spring, we launched our coordinated street outreach program. and We've nearly doubled the number of outreach workers that we are sending out into the community on a daily basis. More recently, we launched an outreach program specifically to connect with residents camping along our state highways, and at the same time, brought on a new outreach provider to the city of San Diego. The goal of these programs is to provide unsheltered San Diegans a pathway to safe shelter and supportive services, which in turn puts them on the road to permanent or to long-term housing. Getting people off the streets and into stable housing is where all of our efforts must lead. It is the only way that we will end our homelessness crisis in San Diego. With this stronger focus on outreach, we have nearly reached full capacity in our existing shelter system, which is why we continually work every single day to identify new sites for additional beds. Since last December, when we closed the emergency pandemic shelter that was located at the San Diego Convention Center, We've added close to 200 new beds, a 17% increase overall, and we're making progress on getting more beds available. These 44 beds that we're launching today are in addition to that 17% increase. But as we acknowledge, every person's circumstance uh, in homelessness is different, and our sh existing shelters are not appropriate for everyone. There is an acute need for shelter and services for unsheltered residents who struggle with substance abuse or mental illness or both which sadly is too often the case. And that's why Chairman Fletcher and I, along with the City's Housing Commission and the County's Department of Behavioral Health Services, have been working since the summer to create this facility. The county has extensive behavioral health uh, expertise, and so Chair Fletcher worked with the healthcare experts under his purview to design an outreach and case management program to fit this facility. My team worked with the Housing Commission to identify and prepare this building. Some of you may remember it as an old Pier 1 retail store. Uh, and, and the building is owned by the City of San Diego and to convert it into this shelter use. These 44 beds, I want San Diegans to know, is just the beginning. We're working to identify additional locations for what we will call Sea Heart Safe Havens, which would offer that high level of care for those with those more acute challenges. 
And I look forward to continuing to work closely with the county on those efforts. Now, before I turn it over to Chair Fletcher and to Piedad, I want to recognize our city team who did the critical work of preparing this site so that it can be used for this important purpose. Uh, we are talking about new plumbing and electrical for washers and dryers, a new water heater, connections to showers, an HVAC repair, roof repair, interior and exterior paint, and a whole lot more. As I mentioned, this was done in a relatively short amount of time, converting a retail shop into homes. That's not easy to do. But you know who can get difficult jobs done? City workers. So would you please do me a pleasure of extending a collective gratitude to Casey Smith and his team at General Services Department for who are all here today. Guys, thank you for what you've done. A special acknowledgement to Steve Anderson, the project lead on this facility, who is retiring after 26 years with the City of San Diego. To Steve, thank you so much for your dedicated service to the people of San Diego. We are so grateful for you, sir. There he is, Steve. Man, I have to tell you, it has to feel pretty good to be able to drive by this facility and say, your dad, your mom did that, right? You're helping to make the city a better place for more people. So guys, thank you again for, for your help. With that said, none of this, none of this would have been possible without the cooperation of the County of San Diego. And I think it's not too much to ask the city and the county to collaborate under the leadership of Chairman Fletcher. We are doing that all the time. And today is proof of that. Would you please welcome to the podium Chairman of the County Board of Supervisors, Nathan Fletcher. Nathan. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mayor, and uh, good morning to, uh, to everyone here. Um, look, the Mayor's right. Your city government and county government have to work together. Um, and we made that commitment uh, as chair of the board when the mayor came in, made that commitment. That hasn't always been the case in San Diego. Uh, for those of you that have watched, your city and county have often been butting heads and blaming each other, and those days are over. Uh, we are rolling up our sleeves and working together, not just to collaborate, but to collaborate on real, tangible things uh, that, that can, can make, make a difference. Um, the, the issue of homelessness is front and center for so many San Diegans. Um, people see it and, and they're, they're, they're outraged by the inhumane conditions in which people live. Uh, they're also frustrated by the impact that it has on neighborhoods and the impact that it has on businesses and folks want to see things getting done. Uh, and today is another piece, another step. This step alone will not end homelessness in San Diego, but we are doing everything we possibly can to meet the need of our community to meet the need of the unsheltered, to make sure that they have opportunities to get housed and get treatment, and to meet the need of our communities and our small businesses that are being impacted by this problem. And I greatly appreciate uh, the mayor's leadership, the city's work, our county team, uh, our partners across the way, uh, who all understand how serious the problem it is, and also understand the urgency uh, at which we need to move uh, to show the public that we are taking actionable and concrete steps uh, to, to move forward. The program we're launching today is different than something that we've done in the past, and it is a recognition that there is a, uh, a category of individuals who are unsheltered who have very serious problems, uh, very acute substance abuse issues, uh, perhaps alcohol dependency, mental health issues, uh, a, a category of folks for whom a lot of the normal outreach and housing programs simply aren't enough. And so by launching our community harm reduction teams, we're launching a new category, a new uh, program and effort that's designed to meet a need that is not presently being met. Um, and that is what makes this unique and what makes it different. Uh, these teams that are going out uh, are not just your uh, outreach worker like we've had in the past who do a tremendous job, but we can't ask them to do something that they're not equipped to do. And the Seahart teams, when they go out there, they are, they are going to include licensed mental health clinicians, substance use counselors, peer support, mental health clinicians, and nurse practitioners. A much higher level of service to meet a much higher need. Those most chronic, most severe individuals who are there. But the outreach worker alone doesn't help at all if they don't have a place to take them. And that's why this facility is the first step in what we're doing, is the place those individuals can come and get a higher level of care a higher level of services that is uniquely designed to meet their particular needs. Um, and we think that this has tremendous promise to help us with some of those uh, who are struggling the greatest. Uh, the additional step, which we're working closely with the city on to bring on uh, safe haven locations, less in a shelter and, and more in an individual room, those will continue and we will get that done as well. But today is a strong step forward uh, in, in meeting this commitment and doing the things we need to do. 
Um, you do see a lot of things coming online. We've got mobile crisis response teams online. We're opening up crisis stabilization units. We're trying to tackle more services in our jails for those folks who cycle in and out. We're looking at everything we can do to maximize our mental health and behavioral health services. Uh, but I, there is an acknowledgement uh, that we have to do more. We have to do it faster. We have to do it quicker. Uh, and we have to keep launching concrete programs. The other thing is from the county standpoint, we've set aside five years of funding for this program. Not that we will do five years and it will go away, but to show a long-term commitment. This is not something we're gonna do for 30 or 60 or 90 days and say, okay. No, we, we know that there is a need out there for individuals who need this much higher level uh, of service, a much higher level of engagement. Uh, and then when we get them to accept that, we gotta bring them to a place like this where they get a much higher level of service and then we can get them into a place uh, where they can live a stable life uh, and over the next five years, over the next five days, we're going to learn some things. And as we learn, we will adjust, we will modify, uh, but we will never stop moving, understanding every single day the public expects to see progress. They expect to see us doing things and doing them differently than we've done them in the past uh, to try and get a better outcome. And I'm so grateful uh, for everyone who was here, uh, for the mayor who from the day he became mayor said, hey, we're going to work on this, we're going to tackle it, we're going to do the hard things. Uh, I think there's days we probably talk four or five times a day. Um, our tremendous partners, uh, Alpha, who is here, Family Health Centers, uh, I want to say a special shout out to them. I know uh, Ben is here from Family Health Centers and others uh, who are really helping us uh, with the uh, community harm reduction teams that are there. Um, and all of the partners every single day who get up and acknowledge the severity of the problem, acknowledge what we have to do, uh, and why it is so important moving forward. Uh, I also want to thank Dr. Luke Bergman and his team uh, at the Dep Director of Behavioral Health Department. Uh, at the county, this is the area we're focused on most and what we are asking them to do uh, every day we add to the list of things that we want done right away. Um, and so there is a, an urgency at which we're moving. And so I'm so grateful for, uh, for everyone. And uh, again, our ongoing commitment to know that we have to do more. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Piedad Garcia, uh, our Deputy Director of Behavioral Health, uh, who can share with you a few more details about the community harm reduction teams. Dr. Garcia. Good morning, all. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Fletcher. Uh, Mayor Gloria. Uh, the community heart reduction team uh, is really uh, a labor of love. If, if you know, the Sea Heart uh, was intentional, uh, community heart reduction, but it has uh, two meanings, right? Uh, the work that we're going to be doing with uh, Family Health Centers of San Diego and their clinical team is, is something uh, from the heart. Uh, these are the most uh, difficult to engage uh, individuals who are homeless in, in, in the city of San Diego. These are individuals that have been uh, homeless for many, many years, suffer from mental health conditions or substance use conditions, uh, or both, and uh, are difficult to engage in, in treatment or services. So the C-Heart uh, team will use a harm reduction approach or model of practice um, to really uh, begin to uh, work with a client from a person-centered approach, uh, from a client choice, and offer uh, an array of service needs uh, based on their needs, whether it's physical health or behavioral health, or um, ultimately, of course, uh, uh, housing. And this uh, opportunity for this uh, shelter is dedicated to this cohort of clients very specific and intentional and purposeful. So we work very well, uh, very close together with Alpha Project uh, to create a, a client center approach and plan for, for these individuals, not only to, for treatment, but also for an exit strategy, right? Uh, to permanent housing, which ultimately is our goal. And so in this uh, effort, that's what we're going to focus on uh, with the initial cohort of uh, approximately 100 clients. And uh, I want to focus on, a bit uh, on the outreach and engagement piece. If you recall, I said they are very uh, hard and difficult to engage in services or treatment. Sometimes uh, the expectation is, well, get them housed, get them services. Well, that's not that easy and that simple. Uh, client choice, person center is the focus, and we will do whatever it takes uh, to help that individual. They may not be 
uh, shelter on the first day we offer it. It may be three months down the line or five months down the line. Uh, so persistence and purposefulness is what's going to get us uh, uh, with, you know, success. And success is really uh, health care and, and housing at the end of the day. So thank you very much. Um, uh, look forward to um, talking with you further down the line to see how we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Garcia. Now it's a pleasure to introduce our partner in this effort, uh, the CEO of the Alpha Project, Bob McElwain. Bob? Thank you, Mayor Todd. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I have a raspy voice because my daughter, who was trapped in Australia for the last two years because of COVID, just came home yesterday, and so uh, we did a lot of talking and screaming and yelling and fun last night. So that's a blessing. My day is already better. <clears throat> so once again, thank you, Todd, and uh, certainly Nathan. I knew all these, these young men when they were young men about that tall, and now look, now look at them. Um, my long-term friend, Pia Dad, we go back 30 years or more. She stayed young. I got old. <laughs> my blessed friend, uh, Lisa Jones, who I pester. I, I, she's probably aged 10 years. Uh, since the last uh, two years, just because uh, she's, she's one of the, she's, uh, if you don't know her, she's one of the, uh, the big shots over at the housing mission, but she's one of those folks who can walk the fine line between politics and provider needs, and she's just, I, she's 24-7, she needs more money. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> My, Steve, I didn't know you were retiring. Holy mackerel, we go back to high school or something. Yeah, yeah, he stayed young too. I don't know what these homeless people did to me, but... <laughs> My team, uh, <clears throat> Karen Pucci, who runs all of our shelters, uh, started out in the office, uh, kind of put her in charge of one of the first shelters in the rest of history for over 20 years. I can put her in any city that we've been to to do this. Her mentor and now uh, a super uh, asset to this company is Jesse Miller. And now we're bringing up the next generation. Bree Pucci is going to be uh, managing this facility over here. Nepotism works at Alpha Project, amen? Okay. Um, our work crews, the city crew is outstanding. I don't, I don't know if you have any before or after pictures of this place, what it looked like uh, before we took this over and before the city got engaged. It was bad. I think the first day we were here, we did 100, 200 syringes. Uh, you can imagine all the stuff out on the sidewalk. I didn't know if this place could, could come together, but it has. And, and this is the kind of fun thing that we get to do at Alpha is to have these new opportunities when you take a place over and, and then you make it look like this. This is not a shelter. This is going to be a community like all of our facilities. Um, and, and it's only a testament to the folks that work with us. Uh, Fred Clark is TBS crew. Our crews that came in the last few days set up all this stuff. If you've seen the facility over here, once again, it doesn't look like a shelter. Poinsettias, Christmas tree, we'll do Christmas. Uh, uh, we like to have parties at Alpha Project, and that includes all of our folks. Uh, and we make it as accommodating and as homey as possible. <clears throat> it's still a shelter, but we're going to make it a home. Um, this facility, and you've already heard, is going to be a place for the most infirm. You just think about it. It's cold out there, and it was rainy out there yesterday, and it's miserable out there. And just think, there's some folks out there right now that have no idea that their lives are going to change in this facility. That's the miracle when we say Alpha Project, where miracles happen. That actually came from our our folks. You know, I'm a miracle, Bob. I'm a miracle, and I've, I'm certainly a miracle. Um, they're going to receive, I call it concierge service here. We're going to build long-term relationships with these folks and make sure that they have the best opportunity to succeed and to gain, regain their independence. Um, we are as committed uh, to this community as we are to our residents. So many times, you know, folks, uh, and justifiably so, they don't want shelters, they don't want places in their communities because of the negative impact. If you go to any Alpha facility, and when we started 35 years ago, our commitment was both ways. First to our residents, and first to the people we were trying to help, but also to the communities that we're in. This place is already much better than it was. This was a shooting gallery here. And it was a, I can't cuss on TV, but it was a something show. This, these, my heroes back here, led by the mighty KB and Jules, Julius, hiding behind the post. <laughs> I told him if Hollywood calls, I get, I'm their agent, I get 15%. <laughs> I 
All of our wheels have changed, folks. These are residents at all of our uh, shelters, uh, Bridge Shelter 1 and 2. These folks get up every day. We'll go back to five days a week this week. We were saving some money for over here. It's all privately funded, started by uh, Carol Barber and her son Kevin. Um, and it pays stipends to these folks to do two things. To go out in the community, change that stereotype, maybe three things. We're trying to change that stereotype of, of what, who homeless people are. It's always a negative uh, a picture, brings to mind a negative picture. But these folks are heroes every day. They're being embraced by communities, and I think they'll, they can tell you that themselves. Communities that justifiably so maybe didn't want us there because of they see what's going on down the street. But now they're cleaning up these neighborhoods, having fun doing it, getting a little bit of money. I think it's 52 bucks a day. And uh, it doesn't matter what stage of physical health or mental health that they're in, as long as they just want to get up and do something. something. And they also are social workers for part of that day. They mentor, talk to people, with some folks they've been camping with for 20 years or more, and say, you know, this isn't so bad. Maybe you can come in and try this. I did it, and it works for me. And maybe folks that are in this facility that don't know their lives are going to change, they're going to be on this crew, too. And we're going to go out in these neighborhoods five days a week, walk the parking lots, walk the alleys, clean up stuff, but talk to the folks that are out there and encourage them that they can do this, too. It's a blessed, blessed thing. This is, this is the most blessed job anybody possibly had. But once again, a testament to our donors that are so gracious that say, Bob, we believe in empowerment empowering people, not entitling people, empowering people to be part of the solution. And it works every day. Amen? Amen. You all have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Bob, thank you very much. Uh, McElroy is a hard act to follow. Um, but let me just land this plane uh, by uh, repeating a, a little bit of what he said. Um, you know, this is a collective effort. As I mentioned before, this would not be possible without the collaboration of the County of San Diego, uh, Chair Fletcher uh, and his board. I want to acknowledge again uh, the presence of City Council Member Stephen Whitburn. Council Member Whitburn is an incredible leader when it comes to homelessness uh, prevention and solutions. He's helping to support the reuse of this city-owned land for this purpose, helping to vote uh, for the dollars to actually fund this thing. So Stephen, thank you so much for your hard work on this issue. I couldn't do it without strong leadership from the Council and Stephen's one of the strongest. We have great housing commission staff. Lisa Jones was mentioned. I want to acknowledge Molly Chase, Jonathan Herrera. We have some great people at our housing commission that are working hard on this. And what I just want to conclude with is there's a lot of folks here, right? We were able to do this in a relatively short amount of time. We've been really able to do this one of the most difficult times, right? We're still in the middle of a pandemic. We have a mask mandate back today, right? We have folks that are sick. We have folks who are hospitalized. We have folks who are dying. It is hard to do this work, any work. Um, but this work in particular has been difficult. And yet we have all stayed at the table to deliver this solution today. And you've heard it from all of us. We're not done yet. I say to the people of San Diego, the conditions on our streets are unacceptable. No one here is happy with the conditions. And that's why in the middle of a pandemic, we're sitting here and finding creative solutions to make sure that we get more people off the streets. And we'll continue to do that work until the work is done. That's when everyone has a home, when everyone has the support of services to stay off of our streets. In San Diego, we will not allow the streets to become a home. We will do everything we can. And with the help of good people like Alpha Project, like Family Health Centers, the County of San Diego, the San Diego Housing Commission, we will get this job done. I ask for folks continued partnership. This is where I gotta give a shout out to the Midway community. It's been a while since they've had a permanent facility in their neighborhood. Not every community will accept it, but as Bob mentions, when you can do this and show the return, when you see fewer people and fewer encampments, uh, fewer, less garbage in the community, you know this is gonna make your neighborhood better. We need to replicate this in a lot of communities in San Diego because this is not just a downtown problem anymore. You see this everywhere. And so if it's everywhere, Everywhere has to be a part of the solution. We'll continue to work to do this, hope that this pandemic passes so that we don't have to continue to do social distancing and testing and all the kinds of stuff that can sometimes make this work even more difficult. But at the end of the day, I know, I believe that we can drive transformational change on this issue. Just this past year, a 17% increase in, in the number of beds that we have, greater occupancy levels at all of our shelters, more coordinated street outreach, the strong partnership with the county. A lot has been done during a difficult time. Let's get through this pandemic. Let's stay focused on this issue, the number one issue that San Diegans talk to me about every single day. 
In a pandemic and an economic crisis, homelessness is what people talk to me the most about. And they're not just talking, we're listening and we're delivering solutions and we're not done yet. Thank you all so much for being here today. Take a moment to talk to some of the wonderful workers who are here, whether the folks that help transform this facility, the folks that are gonna provide services here, the public servants, city, county workers who are doing great work. We are working hard on this issue and we're not done yet. Thank you all very much.